Kevin Durant getting hurt in pregame warmups a couple of nights ago. By the way, real quick, guys, I'm surprised he didn't break his ankle. Yo, that Seeing looked that, really what bad, look like. Freddie. It looked really bad. Hey, Jay, yeah. what, do you think it was a wet spot right there, like a little sweat drop? So, but, okay, I, I literally had this happen to me. So, when I was trying to come back from my um, from all my surgeries in my left leg, I was uh, I, I literally got I had a chance to go overseas. I got I got cut by the nets. Mm-hmm. I was going. I went down to the G League. I tore my hamstring off my bone. Oof. I had to go back towards back to Duke to do more recovery because I I got a crib down there. And like five months later, I was working out by myself. Literally, was going in doing full court layup drills. Was going in for a left handed layup where you jump off your right leg. Yeah. Literally slipped on a wet spot, yeah. dislocated my right ankle, mm. just like that. Pop. Like it was one of those random things, but yeah, it was right. always on one of those slick spots. So yeah. automatically, to me, like and also, I mean, whether you say it or not, the low tops twisting even to get your ankles turned. Like wet spots, man. That stuff happens. It's oh, like see, freak it looked, accidents. It looked like to me. Right there, it looked like it could have been a wet spot. I just, I mean, look, I, I, it just watching how the ankle, how the foot hit the ground as he went off of it, it just looked like right there was a slippage, and then that's when it rolled. You know, like yep. if you take a, a look at it, like, right, see how it kind of slid? I was like, oh, okay, well, maybe it was a wet spot they just didn't see versus he's got a bigger shoe, therefore there's spacing there, it's not tight. I'm like, no, nah, I think it was a wet spot. But, you know, I'll tell you what I'm the looking at it from afar. Too. I'll tell you what doctor said to me, too. He's like, you're lucky when you went that your knee didn't give out. Because like, right. that puts a lot of stress on your uh, your LCL on the outside of your leg, right? So, like, Man. when you – because you literally see KD about the lift. He's jumping off that left leg. Right. So, your whole – all your body weight is on that. It's not like there's your ankle you ever, your knee hey, Jay, but have you ever missed step? While going to the cup for a layup, made, you know. Like just, stepped on somebody's foot? Or, no, just or, a or misstep. A false step. Or a false step. A, a false step, so to speak. What do you mean? What's a false step? You know, sometimes you like step, uh, like a short step. Somebody like cut in front of you or you're trying to do something and you take like a false step that way. That's what he's talking yeah. about. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, but I never rolled my ankle that way. Okay. Wow. Man. Non-athletic. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But <laughs> I'm just leaving that alone. Super. But, but the, doesn't it, we talked about this yesterday, Jay, <laughs> when you were out. It seems like if you're the Denver Nuggets, so many things are happening where the basketball guys may be conspiring for you on, and conspiring against Chris Paul. I, look, I'm a big believer in karma, but this is not karma to me. But it seems yeah. that every time you look around, somebody's having some kind of issue. And the Denver Nuggets seem to be the only team in the Western Conference that's been devoid of that so far. I, I'm going to say this, and I, I really need everybody who's listening to our show, KJM, to, to hear me on this key. The media does not want the Denver Nuggets to win. Like, that's the reality of it, okay? They don't find anything sexy about Jokic. You're going to hear everybody discouraging, whether you believe it or not, that he's going to win his third MVP. He is. Like, well, what happened to him in the bubble and this team and Jamal Murray? Yo, this team is loaded. They're the best team in the Western Conference. They're probably the best team in the NBA. Aaron Gordon has had the best year of his career. Jamal Murray is playing well. You got Nikola Jokic is going to win his third MVP. Michael Porter is averaging like 18, 19. He, he's finally healthy. They got a great additional pieces. You get Thomas Bryant that gives you depth. Bruce Brown from the Brooklyn Nets, he gives you a piece. They have all the pieces and they have the depth. And Reggie Jackson it's on the Denver Nuggets, by the way. Nice no, pick up. Like, nobody even talks about that. On the Denver Nuggets, they are top to bottom the best team. But it's not the same sexiness. So you're not going to hear the media talk about it. We'll talk about the Lakers and what's going on with LeBron James and AD. Like, we'll yes. talk about what's going on with Golden State and can yes. they get it back and Steph As Curry. And, you know, do they lose it? We'll talk about what's going on with John Morant. But everybody else is falling down yes, but the we, Denver Nuggets. We, we, we should talk about the Lakers and Golden State. I'm not State saying that. Yeah, Durant. I get you. But in, in – what you were saying, Freddie, about the, the the basketball gods is doing this to Chris Paul, doing what? It's two to three weeks, man. The playoffs ain't starting. Oh, but they dog. don't need. They don't need. They they can lose however many games over the next several weeks, Key, and game, still be see, fine. The season's gonna be over in three weeks. Yeah, I'm about to say, that's only, that's, what, I, that's what I'm saying. They'll still be fine though. If he comes back, when he comes back. They'll still be fine in the first round. They'll be fine. Yeah, I, I'm not, I think so in the first round. But it's this is Kevin Durant, okay? man. This is why I disagree with you, okay? Because you know, this team's barely played together, man. Exactly. I, I get, I get all of that. I, I understand they haven't played together and they need to do this and do that. Kevin Durant was Kevin Durant the four or five games that he played. The four or five games he's been in I, Phoenix, he's still been Kevin Durant. And they, they, I'm they, betting, I'm betting that they can get their stuff together throughout the playoffs and win it. 
I, I'm betting that. That's no, just I'll, me. I'll, I'll bet. I'll, I'll bet against that. Okay. Just because I still this team has no defense and they still lack depth. Just, just like there's a just, lot more than K. I, K. I, I, I hear. You. I get it. I get what you're saying. They lack depth. The defense. We talked about that early. But when I bet you, I don't want die pack money. All right, so we're this is our off. official bet today, yes. March 10th, yeah. right? Yeah. I got you didn't Denver. hear me. I don't want die packed money. I don't want money with die in it. <laughs> Draymond Green versus Dylan Brooks. Now, these two have had a serious back and forth the last couple of days. That's become public knowledge. They met last night. The Grizzlies beat the Golden State Warriors 131 to 110. Here's the message from Dylan Brooks to Draymond Green, clapping back at Dylan Brooks not being the dude that Dylan thinks he is. What was the message that you had to Draymond? That's what I do. I talk. And, you know, I told him. I told I, I told him that, um, you know, keep that mic. Keep that mic. He's better at the mic than pooping. You know what I'm saying? So keep doing this podcast. Keep blogging. Keep doing this thing off the court. You know, it's cute. It's fun for him. <laughs> he called him a blogger. I know. That's so low. Savage. That's so messed up. <laughs> Yeah, but I can't call a guy. I can't call a blogger. I mean, I can't guy call a guy a blogger, blogger. with four chimps, a blogger with four chips, two gold medals, uh, NBA defensive play. It's like it's just I can't even. Like I, yeah, I. I mean, <laughs> yep. I just I mean, can't even. What you like, said. <laughs> you say what? I said what, what you said. Key exactly. I'm not yeah, gonna call like a guy a blogger. I'm gonna call a dude a blogger. I get it. Jay, it, it's tongue in cheek. It's back and forward. That's good for the game. All I got it. But at some point, if you're Dylan Brooks, you got to realize you're not going to win that battle, man. I don't care what you think. Until you have accomplished what that man has accomplished, you're not going to win that. You're just not. You could just. You might as well just take that L. I mean, they gave the L last night to the Warriors. Yeah, but that's still. Uh, okay, so you, it was one game. so you beat I'm me in you. a regular season. Yeah. Yay! Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, uh, Dylan, Dylan Brooks is always going to pop off, right? And, and Draymond is, too. Draymond's resume – you know, dwarfs that of Dylan Brooks. They haven't even been to a Western Conference Finals yet. Mm-hmm. So, you know, my thing is, I, this is what the Memphis Grizzlies do. This is who they are. The problem is all this John Morant stuff that we've been talking about, Keith, for the last couple of weeks. You know, if it's deeper than, you know, what people know about right now, which is what I'm hearing on the inside track of things, like, he may not be around for a while. So, Dylan might want to just focus on the game itself instead of these championships. Because if, if John Morant is around... There ain't no way. And if these two teams meet in the playoffs, even with Golden State not playing their best basketball, with no John Moran, I'm taking Golden State easily. Not even a question. Mm-hmm. A little read and react here in Keyshawn, Jay Will and Max with Keyshawn Johnson, Jay Williams, and Freddie Coleman on ESPN Radio and ESPN2 reacting to current events that were in the past and bringing them to the present. Nuno, it's your turn once again. All right, so we're going to skip ahead. Fred Van Vliet on Wednesday Ooh, ended up just ripping the ref. So... Listen to what he says, but then after this, have either one of you, I know none of you are outspoken, we're never outspoken as athletes and <laughs> things of that nature, but have you ever wanted to do this yeah, I feel or like done you're talking this? To me. I don't mind. I'll take a fine. I don't really care. I thought Ben Taylor was <laughs> terrible tonight. On most nights, a couple of the, you know, out of the three, there's one or two that just <laughs> the game up. Tonight, you're competing pretty hard. The third quarter, I get a tech changes the whole dynamic of the game change the whole flow of the game you know most of the refs are trying hard i like a lot of the refs are trying hard they're pretty fair they communicate well and then you got the other ones who just want to be and um just kind of the game up nobody's coming to see that they come to see the players i think we're losing a little bit of the fabric of what the nba is and was and it's been disappointing this season um you can look up most of my texts this year have been with ben taylor officiating so at a certain point as a player you feel it's personal Yo, I, I, mm. commend, I commend him for speaking out. I, I think more athletes, especially for a guy like Fred who doesn't say a lot all the time, so when he does speak, you're like, damn, you're saying it like that? And by the way, like you know me, I'm, I'm nerdy in this too, Key. Like, you watch a lot of games. There are so many texts. I'm like, what are we doing? Like, well, what are we – if you actually saw what Fred got a tech for, you'd be like, what the – what was that? Like Scott Foster the other do- night with um with his teammate. Yeah. Yeah. Like they say, it's like there's one where Jason Tatum got a tech just for he was more pissed off yeah. at himself I did and he see slapped that. his hands and the ref he's like, what, what do you mean? Like you get a tech, Jordan Poole got a tech for passing the ball back to the ref. Like it, it's so many of these relationships are personal where it just feels like, oh, now you're doing it just to make make yourself known or make a point when you don't even need to make a point where it messes up the entire flow of the game. Yeah, I never really uh, had to take a referee publicly to the task at a press conference or anything like that. I just would chew them off, chew their ears off, 
you know, doing the game or walking back into the tunnel at halftime or coming out the tunnel at halftime. That would be really the only – or a pregame when I see them out there, I might slide up underneath them and whisper something in their ears and Which let them know how I felt about the last time. Yeah, slide into his DMs? No, it wasn't DMs back then. <laughs> Jeez, um, but, you know, just slide up underneath them and whisper something to them. Let them know. Say, man, you know you blanked up that call the last time. Don't you dare do that again because if you do that again – I'm going to, you know, blankety, blankety, boom, 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 and, and walk away. Just little still little stuff like that. It, it's interesting um, because I, I had the respect, I guess, of certain referees for the most part. I think, you know, when you give a percentage, I don't want to give a percentage because sometimes we give percentages and ain't the right ones. But, right. Um, you know, I would say a high percentage of the referees in the league I had respect for. They had respect for me. So I didn't really need to go all on them like that. I went hard. I got I got a fine one time, 10K less than what Fred got. Okay. Because he going, got 30,000. Yeah, but just for going, because a, a, a guy just didn't, didn't give me no calls. Like That ever. was light? Like ever. They should have hit you heavy. They, they hit been, you they, light. That was heavy. It's still well, heavy. They should have got you for about 60. Yeah, look at <laughs> you. You, you. you ain't never get far on key? Yeah, I got for going, a lot. For going yeah. back at the refs? No, no, not, no the, not, not with the refs. Not referees. I got fined for uniform violations, okay. throwing the football the in the stands. And see, it's so funny. I throw a football in the stands. They call it inciting a riot. What? I threw football in the stands. They said I could incite a riot, which is true. You throw the football, people, you know, they fighting against fighting you. Can hurt somebody. Ball. People okay. try to fight to get the ball. Got so it. what I stopped doing is stopped throwing it in the stands. The first defense was twenty-five. The second was five. I think the third it jumped from five to fifteen. Okay, and I did it. Hundred. Yeah, one was 2,500 hmm. the not first bad. time. No, 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 no. But wait, hold on, man. <laughs> like you you tests, count mine. It's accumulating. And then it started accumulating. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so, yeah. so if you hit, if you check this out, though, if you hit with the 2,500 yeah. and you hit with the five Bingo. in the same game. It keeps yeah, going. Boom, okay, boom, so going. that's five on the throw in the, in the stadium. Then they hit you for the 7,500 on the uniform violation. Oh, boy. Add that up in one game. Come yeah. on, man. Yeah. Hey, did that stop you from throwing the ball into the stands anymore? It stopped me from throwing the ball in the stands. <laughs> That's <gotta> and, then, <laughs> and then I started walking over to the stands. Right, and handing, <laughs> and handing, handing the ball. The ball. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.